Scent Blocker presents Whitetail Frenzy. It's Kentucky, so Kentucky has that early season. You get a chance to harvest a buck in velvet. And, and man, it, I know people love the rut, but I love that time of year hunting those early season bucks. Yeah, this is my favorite time. I mean, the rut, it always brings in new bucks. If you want to, you know, talk about targeting a specific buck, there's no better time than that early season, and especially in Kentucky. Right there. Look at this. This isn't your average hunting show, and hunting isn't our full-time occupation. We have families, full-time jobs, and face the same struggles as many of you. Months of scouting and preparation for a single short moment in time. That moment when you can't control your breathing and your heart is pounding out of your chest. Whitetail Frenzy is brought to you by Scent Blocker, Elite Archery, the world's most shootable bow, Dual Game Calls, Get Real, Get Dual, Camex Crossbows, built like no other. Last week, I was in British Columbia. I smoked a giant trophy black bear, and, and, and that's just not, that's not our average show. You, you know, we're, we don't do this full time. We have families, jobs. We don't get to travel around and hunt all the time like a lot of people think. This week is back to reality. We're gonna, the first one, we're gonna join Brian and Derek and Bradley. They have a family, they have one on the way. Derek is out there hunting, shooting her elite bow, and it's Kentucky, so Kentucky has that early season. You get a chance to harvest a buck in velvet, and, and man, it, I know people love the rut, but I love that time of year, hunting those early season bucks. Yeah, this is my favorite time. I mean, the rut, it always brings in new bucks. You know, you can run your trail cameras, and you always get that picture of, oh, there's one we don't know about. But if you want to, you know, talk about targeting a specific buck, there's no better time than that early season, and especially in Kentucky. So let's tag along and see if Derricka can take her elite bow and capitalize on patterning an early season big buck. We're headed that way. I didn't sleep for maybe an hour and a half. Opening day is always like Christmas Eve. I think I checked my phone about 10 times in the five hours that we were in bed, so I can't wait. I hope it's a good morning. It's raining still right now, as you can probably see, but it's supposed to let up about 6.30 or 7, so we should have good odds. Finally opening day, and uh, it's about 60 degrees outside. It's pouring down the rain. It's been um, pouring for probably the last 24 hours, so we're hoping that um, it quits about seven. We are just ready to go and hopefully we can get the job done this morning. So one of my very favorite times to hunt whitetail is right after a front moves out. On the opening day in Kentucky, it was pouring rain all morning, but Brian and Derek had knew that weather front was gonna move out that afternoon. They got settled in their stand before the rain front moved out. They knew when that weather broke and the rain stopped, the deer would be on their feet feeding. Thank you. 
Whitetail Frenzy is brought to you by Rambo Bikes and X-Stand Tree Stands, Slick Trick Broadheads, the original all-steel broadhead, Slash Arrows with integrated blade technology. Order using promo code Whitetail Frenzy. Custom bow equipment, competition-inspired hunting sites, covert scouting cameras, size does matter, custard stand, the world's finest ready-to-eat hot dog chili, Hatfield McCoy Trails, offering some of the best off-road trail systems on Earth. Okay, so the deer didn't go 50 yards, so it's just right down here on this four-wheeler trail, and uh, we're gonna go and check out our covert cameras and take those down and then go check them out. So here we are in uh, Kentucky, it's opening day. I've got my first velvet buck. He's beautiful, he's healthy. I'm very excited and uh, can't wait to get him home. First off, I wanna congratulate Derrica. That's her first ever velvet buck. I know that she was super excited, but at the same time, that is a very controversial shot. I know there are gonna be a lot of mixed feelings on that shot. Uh, we've actually made a post on Facebook about the shot, we'd love for you guys to go to the Whitetail Frenzy Facebook page, comment, and let us know what your thoughts are. But one thing I want all of you all to keep in mind before you go on and start bashing anybody, please remember that me or no one else here at Whitetail Frenzy does this full time. And Derrica has only been bow hunting for about three years. She's still fairly new to the sport. You know, when she saw this deer, she thought she could put that arrow in there and have a clear path to the lungs. And, and thankfully, her arrow hit his mark, the deer didn't go far, it was a successful recovery and it ended up being an ethical shot. But a lot of things, in my opinion, can go wrong with that shot. Thankfully, that didn't happen, but I know we have a lot of young hunters out there, a lot of beginners, a lot of people that are new to the sport. And, and we just wanna say, you know, it's not a shot that we would recommend anyone taking. And I think Derrica, now that she's had a chance to look back at this hunt, she learned from it and, and that's great for her. She still made a good shot, animal didn't suffer. She got her first ever velvet buck and she learned something for future hunts. Back in the spring, we had a Facebook post where we said, okay, send us a question you want us to answer and cover on air. And we're gonna cover it on, on one of our episodes. And we got a question from Jeff Griffin out of Indiana, and it perfectly went along with, with the theme of this episode. Jeff sent us a message and he said, I see you all have had tremendous early season success in Kentucky. I live in Indiana, but just recently got a lease in the central part of Kentucky. Do you have any tips that could help me harvest my first velvet buck during the upcoming season? Again, that's one of the great things about Kentucky. They have that early season, you got a chance to harvest a velvet buck. They are patternable, but it's kind of a loaded question because there are different types of terrain in Kentucky and, 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 right. and Western Kentucky is different than Eastern Kentucky. And, and he's talking about right in that central part. So we don't know exactly what the terrain's like there. Right, the, the thing that I would stress most about Kentucky though, is you have to get started a little early. I mean, season comes in September the 1st. We start putting our trail cameras about what, July? Yeah, you know, even sometimes earlier than that. Sometimes earlier than that, but when you're talking early. about trying to actually target a buck, you've got to change those those cameras from the mineral sites to figure out which bucks you want to target and to your actual hunting areas to try to figure out which, you know, where that buck is, what he's doing from yeah. day in and day out. It's flipping a week here in Kentucky. I kind of messed up the first day on a big old buck up in pattern, but uh, I think I've slipped in here and I've got the perfect game plan for him. Thank you. 
Can you smell? Yes. Yes. I just smoked that big tea, baby. That's the one I've been after. I smoked that deer back in July. Yes. Oh, God. They're just right out there. All those bucks, they ran up and out. I've never seen them fall. But the rest of them, they're just up there about, I don't know, probably 80 yards. Look back this way and I don't see him. He's had to fall between us and them. All right, it's been about an hour and a half since I shot at this buck. Without a shadow of a doubt, I put a perfect shot on him. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Went back and looked at the video, and I'm pumped. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I mean, I know he's down, but I called Jeff. He's down here hunting with me. He's coming over. He's going to do a track job for me, and uh, we'll see if we can't go find him. That's good blood, Jeff. That's real good blood. Big buck down, baby. Got him down in the bluegrass state. Let's go see him. Boy, look at that giant. Look at that buck, baby. Woo! <laughs> look here, he's shedding. He's starting to shed. I've never killed one in velvet before. This is my first velvet buck. Oh my goodness. Oh man, what a deer. What a deer. Look at that. Gosh. I've been watching this buck all summer long. I mean, when I can make trips down, I'll come down, put my cameras up, glass the fields from wave off, and just try to keep the pressure down and hoping he would stay on a summer pattern when the season came in. Man. So that was a perfect example of, of glassing fields, checking the covert cameras, seeing what the deer were doing. You know, you would plan on just hunting evenings and hunting that field edge, but the deer changed their pattern. They started leaving the fields earlier. They started coming to the field later. So you got tucked back in the woods and you caught that big buck as he was leaving the field, going to a bedding area feeding and it worked out perfectly. Well, your hunt is, is yours a little different terrain. It no, is. No ag fields, no, ag no fields food plots where you're at. So where I had food sources and I knew where the deer were we're going to go and to where they're coming them. from. You had to create the food yep. sources. I went in literally back in May, started creating mineral sites with lethal addiction. Then I went in during the early summer months and I started feeding with whitetail trail mix, creating a food source for those deer to come in. And you know, whitetail trail mix, it ha it's a peanut based food. It, it, it has tons of protein. But then right when we got toward the beginning of season, we had those deer, they're used to coming in, they're used to feeding, they were craving those peanuts. Then we switched to peanut addiction. You carry the small bag in and, and on private land in Kentucky, you can feed. And that's where we utilize that or in areas like that, there's no ag. We create a food source and it allows us to pattern those deer. The rest, was up to me. We're officially set up and ready to go. Definitely like we got a lot of good cover. The buck we're after is coming in. He was here at 402 yesterday afternoon. That's 356 right now. I can't believe that he, he was in that early. That's the earliest he's ever been in. He's been coming in early, you know, around 630, but never that early. We got set up right about 20, 30 minutes ago. Sat here, let things quiet down. And now we're hoping that my heart's already beating because he's coming in so much. Like, I feel like something has to go wrong for us not to get it. frustrating to have the buck that we were after at 20 yards and not, you know, I couldn't get a shot. There were times Travis had clear, clear openings and, and I didn't and just I couldn't get a shot.
Whitetail Frenzy is brought to you by Scott Releases, the number one name in the release game. Whitetail Trail Mix. Go to whitetailtrailmix.com to find your closest dealer. Lethal Addiction Mineral and Attractant. Warner Law Offices. Call 304-345-6789. Peanut Addiction. The addiction is real. Cirrus Wind Indicator. Order at cirrusoutdoors.com using promo code Whitetail Frenzy. Whitetail Frenzy is also brought to you by the following partners. Perfect. Well, we have a good win again this evening. We're back in here where we were two evenings ago. We had a close encounter with our targeted buck. He's a big wide eight point. Not going to score a lot. Doesn't have real tall tines, but he's a big mature deer. He was back in here this morning, an hour after daylight, and he was in here yesterday evening about 20 or 30 minutes before dark. So we're hoping he comes back in today and does just what he did a couple days ago. It was at this time when he comes in. Let's hope he turns broadside right there and gives me a shot opportunity so we can put one of slash arrows in it. seeing any deer activity at all and light is fading it's crunch time it's that magical last 20 30 minutes of light hopefully none of these big bucks get on their feet make the way in there this evening gosh i want to get a dag field so bad i can stand it i want some more back straps too I was losing faith there, man. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Said a little prayer just right before they showed up. I turned around, I told Travis we're losing light. Once again, a little brother knocks one down early season style in Kentucky. You know, he does everything right. He creates the food source, he puts the Cobra cameras out, he figures out when and where that buck's gonna be and he's there to lay the smack down. We just got down out of the stand. It's still probably 75 degrees out here, it's hot. We heard the deer go down, we looked back at the shot placement, the shot placement was perfect. We heard him go down, we're not even gonna look for blood. We know where he is, let's go get him. The deer didn't make it 70 yards. We are on the board, baby. We got it done, babe. Velvet buck, this is the second velvet buck. I've ever killed in my life. It was really cool, you know, here in Kentucky. It's early bow season, early September. Sometimes the way it comes in, it comes in earlier than normal, and this year it did. Came in the third. The season's been in for a few days now, but man, this guy's still in full velvet. I love how those main beams curl up there. What a beautiful white tail. I'm pumped. Thank you, Lord. Thank you again. Thank you for allowing us to cover this deer and get out here and do what we love to do. Thank you guys for watching.
So this is the woman right here that takes care of the kids and picks up the slack at home while we do this. Babe, we just, we uh, we just smoked him. We're still, we're still in the stand, yeah. Yeah, he came in right here at last light and put a perfect shot on him. Huh? Can we turn the volume? Hi, Tucker. Hi, Lila. What are you guys doing? Hey Isaiah, there's my family back home. Love those guys. So when I said that that question from Jeff's kind of a loaded question, you see why. Um, and Jeff, hopefully one of those two scenarios will help you out with your hunt. You know, two totally different uh, types of terrain, ag compared to no ag. Great thing about Kentucky, you know, you said you have a leased private land. You can create food sources if you don't have one there like, like Aaron already did. You can utilize patterning those deer, utilizing your covert cameras to your advantage. It worked out perfect. Two great velvet bucks down. And it just goes back to the same deal with Derek and Brian. They put in the work over the summer. They patterned those deer and they were successful. But hey, thank you guys for helping. Uh, Jeff and anybody else who's in a similar situation, we hope uh, those scenarios help you out for the upcoming season. But keep uh, keep following us right here on Whitetail Frenzy, same time, same place next week. Uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook. Give us a like without you all's uh, likes and follows and support. We can't do this. We, we, we can't bring a show to you guys that, that really relates to the average everyday hunter, which, which is what, what we are. So thanks again for watching. Tune in next week, same time, same place.